You're watching City Channel 4, your window to our community. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce um, at-large Mayor Pro Tem and Iowa City Community School District Di Director of Equity and Engagement, uh, Kingsley Botchway. Kingsley was appointed to his current position in late 2014 and began his time on Iowa City Council in January 2013. Mr. Botchway holds his bachelor degree in criminology from the University of South Carolina, who, which actually is a native of South Carolina, and a professional doctorate in law from the University of Iowa. He served on many boards and commissions while in Iowa City, especially as a former member of the Juvenile Youth Justice Development Board, the Community Police Review Board, a former chair of the Iowa City Ad Hoc Diversity Committee. He was a former vice president of the Dream Center Board, member of a 100 plus men who care and mentor big brother, big sisters. Above all else, he is the father of a rambunctious and handsome two-year-old. <laughs> Thank you, appreciate it. So we are a small group, and I do not believe I have to talk that loud unless we're, we're recording. Are we recording? We are, so I do have to talk in the mic, okay. Well, thank you for coming, good evening. Um, a lot of this talk is going to center around, um, I'll get right into it, uh, the discussion around kind of the, the climate and context of our school district. And some of the, the discussion that happened earlier today was around the national and local climate. Some of the divisive nature or divisive things that have been said in the community, um, both nationally and locally, and how problematic that behavior can be, not only from a political standpoint, but also from you know, just, a, just a feeling, just a feeling from you know, pe groups of people, especially groups of people that are disparaged by the comments. And so um, what we're going to do today is talk about what the school district has done to to focus on that climate, uh, to provide a lot more detailed um, analysis from a data-driven standpoint, to look at what the climate and culture of our district is from a student perspective and provide more information. So with our mission statement, and I will be honest with you, I do not know it verbatim, it talks about the fact that we want to have independent learners capable of making informed decisions in a democratic society as well as in a dynamic global community. When I do the work that I do as the Director of Equity, I focus on that last part especially, you know, making sure that our learners are prepared for that dynamic global community. And so that doesn't matter if you're white, black, um, Hispanic, Asian, I want to make sure that you leave the school district having the tools to go anywhere within the world and have that you know, mindset of cultural, uh, mindset of cultural competency to ensure that you're engaged in, um, in, in different um, schools of thought. One of the things that happened over the uh, maybe two years ago is that our board created a strategic plan. And so part of that strategic plan was three key goals. The first two goals focus on um, academic achievement. And so the first goal is uh, related to math or reading, or excuse me, math. Uh, we have to have a certain percentage point or a certain percentage increase in math for all of our learners with a specific focus on you know, our 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 demographic groups of color. The second one is our reading achievement. And so from a reading standpoint, we want, again, increase the percentage of students that are proficient in reading, again, focusing on those demographic groups of color as well. The third one focuses on uh, the climate and literally wants, wants us to make sure that we're thinking about improving the the climate around um, each and every one of our students. Uh, we felt like this was very important because as we were looking at different data points, I was looking at different research, I was looking at different best practices, we, we understood that academic achievement is tied to um, that culture piece. So this is some context, because I think that when I talk about um, you know, where we're at as far as the Iowa City Community School District and, and how we talk about the Iowa City Community School District, um, we, are, we are a high-performing district. We do a lot of things well. Uh, one of the things that uh, recently came out, and not this last board meeting, but the board meeting before, is we talked about our ACT scores being um, amazing, you know, being above um, the national average. Um, but one of the things that it doesn't talk about, one of the things that we don't necessarily talk about all the time, which is problematic, is where we're at when it comes to the educational achievement disparity. 
disparities. And so if you look on the chart here, you see where we rank, unfortunately, when it comes to um, eighth grade reading and some of the disparity um, that you see within that. One of the things is I have a lot of the implicit bias trainings and cultural competency trainings throughout the district, especially as it relates to um, discipline, is this conversation that, you know, while again, we have, we, we do do amazing things in Iowa City Community School District, um, while we are um, helping students in a variety of different ways, there are things that we can do better. And unfortunately, we have this information here that shows us as um, the, the highest uh, rate as far as, you know, the, disparate, the disproportionality between, um, you know, our students of color and our white students and how many students, or black students as percentages, are pulled out of or moved out of classes compared to um, our white students. And so this is a real thing, and this is something that we consistently want to have the conversation about with all of our teachers, all of our administrators, all of our staff, and how we mitigate um, mitigate these problems and mitigate these issues. And so without further ado, I'll, I'll introduce you to um, Dr. Sarah Brooke um, and Tessa as well. Um, they have been instrumental in helping um, the Iowa City Community School District, assisting, guiding the Iowa City School District in this work. Um, you know, the amazing thing, I can't even, I don't even know how it started, but Tessa is a key component in this. And basically, through her connections, you know, she was able to, um, you know, bring Dr. Brooke on board and provide us with this analysis piece that I think is so crucial to the work that we can do moving forward. I'll talk more about that later on, but I'll let you talk through the uh, district climate survey. Thank you. I'm going to try this clicker again. Yes. All right. So, uh, yeah, I just have to try harder. Um, so I'm going to tell you about the partnership that we have between the district and the public policy center at the university. Um, and so I'm going to tell you about the climate survey, but the climate survey is really only one of four parts of this long-term partnership because one of the things that came out earlier today is the idea that you can't just do something, you know, one time. These are long-standing either conversations and things that need to happen after you have that initial conversation. And so we see this as a long-term partnership, and so I'm going to walk you through the phases that we've already experienced in this partnership and sort of how we're building each phase of the project to sort of move forward in a productive way. So the first phase really is all about the student survey. And we did the student survey um, because we really wanted to hear the experience of students. So we hear lots of uh, anecdotal stories about what happens with certain students, especially when there's uh, traumatic incidences and, and other things that are really um, horrible to hear about. But we wanted to know what happens with the majority of students and are there disparities by race, gender, and socioeconomic status systematically throughout the district across all of the schools? Or can we say, can we identify that it's specific to certain types of groups or certain types of schools? So the student survey um, was our first comprehensive look at, at sort of giving a needs assessment of where the district was um, last year. We also gave school profiles uh, to each of the schools, so they had specific data of their school, of all the students um, in their school that did the survey. The second uh, phase after we did that was uh, this summer. Um, and I'll walk through each of these in a little bit more detail, but I just want to sort of give you a flavor of what it's going to look like. The second phase was we wrote the report with the major uh, findings from the survey. It's very comprehensive. Um, we presented that to the board, and the board said, that's great. Can you identify some key focus areas for us to start with? Because now that you've told us that we have these systematic issues and disparities across different types of students, where should we start? Right? So when you talk about these big issues about racial inequality or racial disparities, people say, well, okay, give me something I can start with. Right? And so we identified these three key areas. We wrote up policy briefs that said, you know, here's what other districts have done, and here's some strategies to address it. Uh, then now, right, right now we're in phase three, so we presented that to the board, and the board said, that's great. We love these recommendations, but you got lots of them. And so can we make sure that there are other people in the community that are also on board, bought into this process. So we, right now we're in the middle of having uh, a multi-stakeholder task force set of meetings to have people work through the recommendations um, in some greater detail and get feedback from all the different stakeholders. The last phase is what we're going to be uh, starting very soon, uh, and Kingsley will talk more about that, where now that we've you know, sort of said, here's what your issues are, here's where you should start, here's some good strategies, here's recommendations, we have buy-in from everybody, the idea is to implement things and to evaluate it and see whether or not progress is being made. So phase one, we did the student survey. 
why did we focus on student experiences? We focused on student experiences because there's a really robust academic literature that shows the importance of student experiences. Experiences that students have in schools are impactful not just to themselves individually, social, psychologically. They're impactful for their actual attainment and achievement in school in terms of their grades and how far they go in school. Um, they're impactful for everything. They're not just a single uh, experience that they have. Um, we also started to focus, we also decided to focus on student experiences because we also know from uh, national literature that unfortunately a lot of experiences that are very important for students' achievements and outcomes uh, are differential by race, class, and gender or socioeconomic status. So we did this survey uh, last February. We gave it to all 6th, 8th, and 11th graders. Uh, it was administered through the district. Uh, we had a very high response rate because it was done uh, while the students were in school. So it's about 2,400 students that filled out the survey. Um, we did an analysis to make sure that the uh, people who answered the survey were racially representative of each of the schools to make sure that you know, we can make some statements that um, sort of say this is what happens at the school and have some confidence in that. And we measured socioeconomic status in the survey by asking them about parents' level of education. So this is very standard in um, giving surveys to students of this age. You don't ask them what their parents' income is. You don't ask them like what their parents do for a living. You ask them what their parents' level of education is. It's a proxy for socioeconomic status. Okay, so we align the survey to the equity goals that Kingsley uh, mentioned briefly at the beginning, uh, and we also aligned it to the things we know are most impactful for student um, outcomes. We asked them about two different kinds of experience that they have in the school. One is their personal experiences. So we asked them questions like, do your teachers care about you? Then we also asked them more uh, broad questions about the general environment of the school, like do teachers in this school care about students generally? So, you know, two different kinds of perceptions, right? One is more reflective of their own experience and the other is more global of the school community and as a whole. We asked them these kinds of questions in nine different areas. Uh, we asked them about relationships with teachers, uh, whether they had a mentor and their relationship with that mentor. Uh, we asked them about different, uh, whether or not they can access different types of support uh, information and resources. Uh, we asked them a series of questions about different negative experiences of school. We asked them about feelings of social belonging and inclusiveness. We asked them about their motivations for attending school. Uh, we also asked them about perceptions of the disciplinary environment, so uh, equity, consistency, those kinds of things. We also asked them a series of questions about classroom inclusivity, whether or not you're included in class materials, whether or not you feel comfortable sharing in class, those kinds of things. Um, and then we also asked them about the salience of race and gender for their own identities and for their relationships with others in the school. Okay, so I'm just uh, going to walk through one set of the results, so the negative experiences of school, so you get a flavor of what kind of data we got from the survey. So what I'm going to show you is the negative experiences of school. So we asked them seven, eight different negative experiences in school. They're all worded similarly about how often has this happened to you. So we asked them, how often do people at your school criticize the way you speak, acted as if you're not smart, acted as if they're afraid of you, think that you're dishonest, acted as if they were better than you, treated you unfairly, uh, how often have you heard hurtful comments about race from other students, um, and then the same from, uh, from teachers. So the first thing we did was we said, we want to know on average how many of these negative experiences student ha students had on average. What you can see on the left-hand side, uh, circled there, is the number 4.4, and that's the overall. So what that means is that overall, of all the students that filled out the survey, so about 2,400 students, overall they reported having about four and a half of those negative experiences. Okay. Uh, then what you can see is we broke it down by grades. So we had 6th, 8th, and 11th graders take the survey. So you can see that 6th graders were lower. They had a little bit less than four of these negative experiences, and those go up for 8th and 11th graders, where they had about five on average. 
This is looking at racial differences. So uh, it starts with black, white, Latino, Asian, other, and then multiracial, in case you can't see those labels. And you can see that on both of the far ends, so blacks and multiracials, have the highest rates of having these negative experiences. So on average, black and multiracial students have about five of these negative experiences. The bars that I'm uh, skipping over are for gender, so that's male and female, and I'm skipping them because they're not very different from each other, so that's good news, right, that there's not, very, there's not a disparity or a big difference between how many negative experiences male and female students are having in the school. The last set of bars here is the socioeconomic status, so this is based on parents' level of education. So people with lower levels of parent education have more negative experiences in the school than people with higher levels of parent education. Then you might ask, okay, well that's on average how many they have, but which ones do they have? Do they have certain ones more often than other negative experiences? And so what this is showing you is overall, what percentage of students say they had this negative experience? So the one that's circled here is um, people feeling that they're better than you or treating you like they're better than you. And that says 82% of students report that. So, you know, very high. The one that I think got a lot of attention in the district and got a lot of people to start paying attention just on, even outside of the district is how often students heard hurtful comments about race from other students. So you can see here that 66% of students, so two thirds of students in the district report hearing hurtful comments about race from other students. And fully one in four students say they heard hurtful comments about race from teachers. So one in four, that's, that's very high. So here's an, another example of looking at uh, one of the negative experiences and looking at who has these negative experiences. So what I'm showing you here is uh, the same kind of breakdown overall, broken out by grade, by race, by gender, and socioeconomic status for uh, her, who heard hurtful comments about race from teachers. Okay, so that last one. So we saw that on the left side here is that 25%, so that one in four overall students said they heard hurtful comments about race. The circle there is showing you that sixth graders are way less likely to hear hurtful comments about race, but it goes up dramatically for eighth and 11th graders. So one third of eighth and 11th graders hear hurtful comments about race from teachers. And what I'm circling here is the disparities by race. So what this is showing you is that one third of black and multiracial students have heard hurtful comments about race from teachers. And same thing with at the end there, this is showing you that there are also large disparities by socioeconomic status. Um, where students that have parents with lower levels of education are much more likely to have heard teachers say hurtful comments about race. All right, so that was just a flavor of walking through one uh, of those nine areas that we asked students about their experiences. This was the negative experiences. This is the cover of the full report that um, if that kind of information sounds interesting, if you wanna know more about it, um, there's a full report that has all the breakdowns for all the questions we asked. It's on the little um, half sheet that we um, gave you. Uh, there's a URL where you can get a, a link to a copy of the report. watching City Channel 4, your window to our community.